this is your typical ATV? It's not. Say goodbye to bolt-on accessories and milk crates. A pin is all you need on Articat's new MRP. In the blink of an eye, set up an MRP to work Monday through Friday. Then go hunting on Saturday. And fishing or camping on Sunday. It's that easy. Mix and match. The combinations are endless. Arctic Cat. More ways to use your ATV. Be rocked in bed. Move. Step in and out of the groove. groove. Liberation from limitation. Freestyle. Act acting in the now. Your brain never asking your body why. Not knowing what your next move is. No right. No wrong. Just doing it. That's freestyle. With control. Freestyle. That's freestyle. Go freestyle. Get live. NBA Live 2003. Rated E for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game.
16th time. Lou Holtz demanding on his quarterbacks. Corey Jenkins, good arm, good runner. He's 26, as we mentioned. If he struggles, then we'll see Pinkins step in, so some extra pressure on him tonight. Big play man is Troy Williamson, number 82. Last week, three catches for over 100 yards, a 10.35 100-meter man in high school. Second and seven from the 23. Five receivers, three to the near side. Two to the far side, shotgun formation. Jenkins throws, and it is complete. Ryan Brewer makes the grab across the 25. It's a pickup of four yards. Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator, says this is where it all begins. Maybe the best biggins of the Holtz era. Watch out for Wharton. The best ever to play his position at South Carolina. Shane Hall is fine, too. And on the other side, not necessarily big pass rushes, but they are solid people. Look for Kendrick Allen to have a big game in the interior, helping to prevent against the run. All right, third and four for South Carolina. Opening drive from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. High formation. They'll keep the ball. And across the 30, it should have enough for the first down tackle by Brady James. It's a gain of five yards. The linebackers, these guys are awesome. Brady James, 76 tackles now through six games. The namesake of the James gang, Captain Courage, is talking to him yesterday. You know, I told him he sounded more like a coach than a player. And on the corner, Demetrius Hookkin is an outstanding cover man. He has had 14 passes blocked thus far. This is the third time these teams have met since South Carolina joined the SEC 10 years ago. LSU leads the all-time series 8-1 in Baton Rouge. It's first and 10 from the 31-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Jenkins short hops the ball to Fez Robinson. It is incomplete, and it'll bring up second and 10. Interesting with regards to Jenkins, Lou Holtz pointed out to us that if he had his way, he talks about back in the late 60s when he was coaching at Ohio State, he coached Jack Tatum. He said that Corey Jenkins could be that kind of player. He would be a stud as a strong safety, but he said we got to play him at quarterback because he's our best athlete. Dudley Marker here. And it'll go against South Carolina. Evidently they didn't get the playoff in time, and that's the responsibility of Jenkins. I mentioned early on the fact that he's 26 years of age, having played minor league baseball like so many others. Quincy Carter comes to mind. His maturity is going to be crucial for South Carolina tonight with his 91,000 screaming fans. First and 15, shotgun. He'll keep it straight up the middle and get to the 30-yard line. It's a gain of about four yards, tackled by Marcus Spears. Yeah, Jenkins had a $575,000 bonus from the Red Sox organization. Pretty tough to walk away from that. And like Kelly Washington, who plays at Tennessee, maybe the baseball thing is not a perfect fit for him and consequently comes back as an older player trying to get it done in the SEC. The physicality that makes you so dominant in high school in baseball does not work at the minor league level. Just because you're 6'2", 220, can hit at 600 feet, doesn't mean you can play baseball. And there are no curveballs <laughs> on Saturday nights in Baton Rouge. Out of the shotgun. And the pitch, it is to Ryan Brewer. And Brewer not faking many out. It is a gain of five up to the 35. Well, this is the one thing that South Carolina does not want to get into too frequently, and that's the third and long, third and six. The defense, as you can see by the numbers, has been tremendous. And there is no weakness in the defense. I found it interesting that when talking with offensive coordinator Skip Holtz, I said, what, you know, what's the weakness that you need to attack? And he laughed at me and said, what, what do you mean weakness? If we have to execute, there is no weakness. I see that 10-5 scoring average, only Virginia Tech is about the very close. Third and six, five receivers, three to the right, two to the left. Shotgun with time. And almost intercepted, almost picked off by Davian James. And it's incomplete. This is exactly what LSU wants, and that is that they want to put it in a position to where Jenkins beats him with his arm, but they're going to get it back as a result of a defensive pass interference. And clearly the partisan crowd doesn't agree with that. So it goes against LSU. We, we talked about it at the outset of the broadcast, as Steve Landis is our referee tonight. It is so critical for South Carolina to come out of the shoots quickly to try and get something going against this defense tonight, Todd. You don't want to find yourself in a hole. You don't, but it's Norman Lejeune, number 36, right, right here. That's the hole that you can see right there. He has his hands on the jersey of number 7. And that's Michael Agus. First and 10. Trying to set up the screen. No way. Andrew Pinnock 
the 255 pounder met by Corey Webster and it's a loss of four Webster the hero from last week against Florida when he had three interceptions including a 45 yarder for a touchdown so many times you see a defensive back like Webster and he gets the three picks but he proves there that he also come up and make a hit Webster the last two seasons with the Tigers was a wide receiver decided in spring maybe I should give his defensive back stuff a try and SEC defensive player of the week not bad second and 15 from the 39 yard line Shotgun again for Corey Jenkins and the Gamecocks. With time going long, man out there. Catch is made! It is made and it is touchdown! Troy Williamson from Aiken, South Carolina. A 61-yard touchdown strike from Corey Jenkins. And last week against Kentucky, he had a 59-yarder that broke the game open. And I have to tell you something right here. I know that Jenkins may not be a great passer, but this throw is right on the money. As we mentioned, the 10-3 speed, so look at this. Catches him right strike, and nobody is going to catch him. Two-time state winners, 100 meters and 200 meters in South Carolina. And working against Corey Webster, that'll take a little steam out of the LSU defense on this opening set. Daniel Weaver, the point after attempt, and it is good. One of the things, that when I was a player, we had a fellow by the name of Cliff Branch, and they used to say, speed kills. Well, that's something that you can't teach. A number 82 delivers right on the money. 61 bomb, the crowd is stunned. Behind him is a 400-square-foot deluxe bachelor with a partial view. In front of him is a junior executive semi-private with no view. But right now, life is perfect. On the open road, in complete control of a six-speed, 200-horsepower Acura RSX Type S. If the price of bottled water has forced you to take drastic measures, try pure filtered water. It's just as good as bottled at a price that's ten times less. Pure water filters. Your water should be pure. Consider this. New Shell gasoline is specially formulated to help prevent deposits in your engine. And a clean engine performs better. Is it any wonder, then, why so many drivers choose Shell? Stamps. At supermarket. Stamps. By phone. Stamps. Online. Stamps. At ATMs along with your local post office. Wherever you find this symbol, you'll find stamps. Conveniently located. Brought to you by the United States Postal Service. Warning, the following stunts were performed by professionals. Do not attempt anything from this movie.
think about all the quarterbacks, Jim Plunk, and think about uh, what he did with the Raiders uh, as far as big plays go. I mean, you can go on and on. First and 10 from the 13-yard line for LSU to begin their offensive series. And here is the handoff. Across the 15 is Dominic Davis. It's a pick up the three, second, and seven. Marcus Randall is from Baton Rouge. He replaces the injured Matt Mock. He's played in four games. Smart, honor student in high school, student body president, brother, quarterback at Southern, and now a high school coach in the area. Just don't turn it over. Think about Dominic Davis. He's going to be busy. He returns punts, returns kickoffs. He's amazing in terms of total offense, but they have to be concerned over the fact that he might wear down as the game progresses. Second and six. Rolling, looking, firing, and completing the catch is made. Jarrell Myers making the grab at the 43-yard line. It's a game at 27 yards and enough for a first down. Tackled by Robinson. LSU's offensive line has improved rapidly. 249 rushing yards on Florida. Watch the sophomore Ben Wilkerson, the center. He matches up with Langston Moore. And that's exactly right. That is going to be a key. If they can block Langston Moore, then LSU is going to win this ball game. The number 57 starts causing problems in the backfield. you got to like South Carolina's chances. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. Here is the give straight up to Dominic Davis. And Davis is able to pick up about six yards. It'll bring up second and four. Tackled by Mohammed. Gamecocks have really evolved into a terrific defense. Fun to watch. Uh, George Gaw sometimes lines up as a, a defensive end. And maybe they're a little bit suspect at the cornerback spot. Dante Robinson, however, that, that is true. But Dante Robinson over the last two weeks has had three picks. So he's ready to go. They're up in the shadow of Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. Second and four, and the give over the right guard. Plenty of room for Dominic Davis now in South Carolina territory. It's a gain of four and very close to a first down. I think he may have a tackle by Mo Thompson. Well, Marcus Randall, he does. They kept saying that he's not going to be affected by this because in spring football, you see five of nine on the season. In spring football, he was neck and neck with Mo, and then he just faded back to pass in the spring game, and his leg gave out from under him, and he had to have ACL surgery. He's just now getting back to where he's 100 percent, but they feel that he has the athleticism for the position. Davis third in LSU history in all-purpose yards. 4,600 plus, and he gets the call again, and again picking and choosing, trying to find a little bit of room, and that South Carolina defense hits a pickup of five, and there is George Gauze to bring him down. Well, Dominic Davis has put up some impressive numbers. The one that stands out to me is the 19 yards per punt return, but you can see that third all-time, ninth in the nation in all-purpose yards with the injury to LeBrandon Tofield. The onus of the offense has really fallen squarely upon his shoulders. He's also the Sugar Bowl MVP against Illinois. Second and six from the 43 in I formation. Clayton in motion. And there is the handoff and the yardage. Reaching out is Dominic Davis inside the 30, up to the 28, a gain of 14. Zaki Mohammed is there, the right cornerback for South Carolina. We are in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number 12, LSU taking on South Carolina. The Gamecocks on the board very early. The 61-yard touchdown up top to Troy Williamson from Corey Jenkins. But LSU has something going on this offensive possession in an effort to try and match the Gamecocks here on their opening drive. Upcoming the seventh play of the drive in motion Michael Clayton to the top of your screen. And Davis again, the workhorse in this drive up to about the 26. Jamesha Jackson on the stop for South Carolina. I'm really surprised at South Carolina for this reason, and that is I would have thought that they would be jamming the box at this point, and that man would be making some plays more. I say that I say that simply because of the fact you get a chance to watch number 57, how quick he is as a nose guard. Nice swim move, and he creates the problems in the backfield. Davis still able to get some yardage out of that. Boy, that is some quickness for a nose tackle. He has seven and a half tackles for loss already. That's unheard of for an inside defensive lineman. Davis is out. Joseph Adai is in. Second and eight from the 27. And no good. Incomplete. Uh, Dennis Quinn, the left end, I believe, got his hand on the football. Furthering the point that I was making is with regards to Randall. I'm just surprised that the Gamecocks aren't pressuring him and 
coming up. I'm surprised at how many yards Davis has been able to get because you know that's who they have to ride. You know, because if Randall's got to throw 35, 40 times a game, that's not going to bode well for the Tigers. LSU is 11 and 1 in its last 12 games.
14-0 game. Hand off to Ronnie Brown. He'll go 26 yards for the touchdown. Brown in the game because Cadillac Williams left it with a broken fibula. No prognosis yet, but surgery is necessary. Florida up by 10 right now. Boy, that is horrible to hear. We, we had Cadillacs in Auburn against Syracuse. Over 200 yards, including the game winner. A very special running back. Hate hearing that. On second and four, Andrew Pennock, the big man, blasting his way across the 30 and down to the 31-yard line. A pickup of 14. First down, tackle by Randall Gay. Coming into this game, we talked about the LSU defense and how effective they were, giving up only 2.6 yards per rush. If number four can get going, the 255-pounder, that's going to be a problem. He puts the defensive end under the pressure of having to go with both the quarterback or the runner. That's Marquise Hill. He makes the wrong decision. The result, a big game for the Gamecocks. He had a shoulder injury in preseason camp. He reminds me a little of T.J. Duckett, the former Michigan State star, now with the Atlanta Falcons. On first down, the give is to Pinnock, and Pinnock right side up to the 37 or so. It's a pickup of four. Great James on the hit. Tonight at 10 o'clock on ESPN, Tyrone Willingham's rejuvenated Notre Dame Fighting Irish look to keep its national title hopes alive as they take on Chance Harridge and Air Force in Colorado Springs in a battle of unbeatens. College football Saturday brought to you by the U.S. Postal Service on ESPN. All right, homeboy, who do you like? I like Air Force. We had Air Force last week. I thought they were as strong of an offensive team as we've seen this year. And you see by those last two meetings, Air Force always plays Notre Dame Cup. And the game at 7,000 feet. Second and six from the 35. Jenkins, plenty of time. Now flushed out of the pocket. He'll keep it. And comes up to the 38-yard line. Maybe a gain of four. Marcus Spears is there. I think they're going to give him three. This is the problem that Jenkins poses. Brady James, their star for whom the defense is named, said that part of the problem with this young man right here is that he literally he's just a third running back. That's what he is. And so unlike some quarterbacks that you don't particularly fear when they scramble out of the pocket, number nine is a physical player that can get downfield and make plays happen. That was great coverage and still they're able to come up with four or five yards. Look at Corey Jenkins on the season. He has had some turnover problems to deal with. A little bit of pressure on his shoulders. Lou Holtz always tough on his quarterbacks. Draw play for the quarterback. Nothing. No game. Randall Gay, the left quarterback, 5'11", 175. The junior out of Bruceway, Louisiana, making his second tackle of the this, ball game. This is a great tackle, but it was expected. You know, you see the empty backfield, and you've got third and two. You know that the quarterback's going to run the ball. Gay able to drop him in his tracks. Dominic Davis is deep. The dangerous one standing at his 20-yard line. And Dean gets the punt away. High floating spiral. Had a fair catch goal for him. About the 25-yard line. 37-yard punt by Tyler Dean. And it's 7-3. South Carolina late in the first quarter. He's a loving father with a terrible secret. You haven't told her what you did to her after I disappeared. Now, how far will he go? Make sure that no one will survive to cover his tracks. Today, a new alias, ABC Sunday, 9, 8 Central. This time I get to drive. Our lifetime is full of important memories. Memories that need to be captured, shared, enjoyed, and preserved. That's why you trust your memories to Kader's. Introducing Mitsubishi's new 2003 line of high-definition big screens. And exclusively at Kader's, Mitsubishi's best, the Diamond Series. Value and trust from the people who know. Kader's. The choice is clear. Professionals at All-Star Chevrolet were full of good information. No pressure, just the facts, and there was a lot to consider. Trade-in values, financing options. The different features of the SUV I was looking at. I was impressed with their scope of knowledge about all the All-Star products. I drove away feeling like I'd made a great decision. And in a wonderful new Suburban. Experience the All-Star treatment. We go out of our way to put you in the driver's seat. Choose All-Star, where the deals are sweet. Yeah! If you miss the show that everyone's talking about, 
Here's your chance to see back-to-back -back episodes of Beg, Borrow, and Deal. Sunday starting at 9, a special encore presentation on ESPN. Welcome back to Baton Rouge. More than 91,600 in the house tonight. Seeing South Carolina leading number 12, LSU. Tigers with the ball on first and 10 from the 25-yard line. A handoff and nice job by the South Carolina defense wrapping up Joseph Adai is Deandra Island. No man is an island. Certainly on that play, he was a loss of two. Well, John Dunn is not here to critique what you <laughs> Very just good. said, but nonetheless, Touché. take a look from the right of your screen. Going to come flying, and he times it just perfectly. Island able to get in the backfield and drop Davis. This is what I would have anticipated in the first series. Make Randall beat you. Go ahead and take some chances. Make this kid make the throws downfield. Second and 12 for the Tigers. championship game inside the Georgia Dome, LSU versus Tennessee. A little bit of a late hit there on Rohan Davey, and as a result, they think, boy, this is lost. Our stud is out. Instead, Mock comes in and is tremendous. Two different times he calls his own number on the quarterback draw, and the result in both cases are touchdowns on the 31-20 to 20 upset of the Bulls who thought they had a shot at the national title. But now it's a little different story. You see Mock with the boot on his foot, contemplating his future. It's a little unsure right now. He's got some problems in that foot. There is a rumor that it could be surgery. Out of Jasper, Indiana, originally committed to Michigan State with Nick Saban. More motion. Rodney Reed, the right tackle. You know, much has been made this week, Todd, about, you know, with Marcus Randall, here's an experienced hand. He and Mock were 1-2 in spring. And, and, and really are similar quarterbacks that it won't change the offensive scheme. But I think that hasn't been questioned this week. I think a lot of people have bought into the idea that there really is no big deal replacing Mark. There is. Well, this is an inexperienced hand. And what the deal here over, over the last two plays has been, as, as a former offensive lineman slash receiver, I can tell you, you get used to a certain cadence from a quarterback. And it's different in practice than it is in the game. And it appears right now that they're struggling a little bit with that. You saw the penalties. Second and long. And the handoff is to Solomon Lee. Check it. It's Joseph Adai, the fullback, the freshman from Houston. It's a gain of four. So it'll continue to be a very long way for a first down for LSU. And rest assured at this point, Jimbo Fisher is not going to put the onus upon Randall to throw the ball downfield deep in his own territory. LSU might be content here to just run the ball here and, and get a punt and get out of there. Third and 17. LSU under Saban, in fact, 10-0 uh, when they're having a 100-yard rush here. Something to watch as you saw the It's running. You said no exercise. He was running. Third and 17. Randall rolling, throwing, and completing. Ahead to the 34-yard line. He needed to get past the 35. Reggie Robinson making the grab. It's a gain of 16. Jonathan Martin on the tackle, and he'll be about a yard short. Do a nice job using his athleticism by rolling him out and giving him an opportunity. That's a terrific catch by Robinson and almost able to get the first down. Good hands catch. And even though they don't get the first down, that young man's got to feel pretty good about himself, knowing that, you know what, it's okay. I can throw the ball downfield. Don't worry about it, Coach. Donnie Jones is the punter. He's from Baton Rouge. And Matthew Thomas, along with Troy Williamson, the man who caught the 61-yard touchdown grab on the opening series for South Carolina, is deep. And the punt is low and returnable. Losing the football is Matthew Thomas. Ball is loose. Who has it? South Carolina keeps the football, but they are pinned deep. Matthew Thomas comes up with the football. A loss of 22 yards on the return after the 44-yard punt. This is a bad decision because as soon as you muff it, just cover it. Instead, he compounds the mistake by trying to pick it up and run. Bad decision on his part. Fortunately for him, a fortuitous bounce. The ball comes back to the game box in a short field position. One Monday night countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, delivered by UPS.
senior executive semi-private with no view. But right now, life is perfect. On the open road, in complete control of a six-speed, 200 horsepower Acura RSX Type S. 33,000 miles of timber and steel. From Portland to New Orleans. From Los Angeles to Chicago. And the beauty of a land that spans half the continent. It's been said that in those 33,000 miles of rail, you can feel America's pulse. Special edition DVD collection is cool. Very cool. Shake it. Master. Only the 007 special edition DVDs Tuesday. Number one. Number one.
with this many people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy's not in the box. He's too far back because you got three wideouts on this side. And the result is you can't jam the box. All right, third down for South Carolina. What will they do? They will throw. Going long, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And it's incomplete. Troy Williamson, well covered this time by Corey Webster. Webster learning his lesson on that 61-yard touchdown. But even so, in that case, Jenkins underthrew the ball, but Webster was with him stride for stride. And number 13 is cotton of the fact. Now, look, if I'm going to come up and press coverage, I've got to hit this guy. Do you think we'll see South Carolina going up top a lot like that tonight? you think that's, at least we've seen it in the early part of this football game? This is what's being set up. If they continue to run effectively between the tackles, that means that you're going to see a lot of single coverage outside, and you're absolutely right. Tyler Dean is the punter. This will be his second punt of the evening. The first one was 37 yards, and it's hey. a great! And it's complete! Oh my, oh it's my! Up for the South Carolina first down to the 44-yard line. A pickup of 12 yards, and the catch is made by Will Bryan of the Gamecocks. I really think that this thing broke down. I think that the punter wasn't sure. I think he was supposed to go downfield, not throw back across his body. Take a look. Now, now, obviously, as he's running here, you're thinking to yourself, well, downfield, look, these are the people he's supposed to be throwing to. He comes back across his body. Great job to come back and lower his head and get the first down. Take a look as, as he surveys the field. <laughs> you know what? They've got to consider here the idea that that's how you do it. You went to his first, second, and third receivers. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fearless Lou Holtz here before almost 92,000. And you could see the numbers on fourth down conversions, but early we've seen Lou Holtz go long, we've seen him go up top, and now gamble on fourth down against the best defense around. Well, what's surprising about this, or maybe not so surprising, is midfield is obviously the best time to go with the fake punt, but truly it didn't appear that LSU was fooled. Give Tyler Dean punter credit for having the wherewithal to see himself on the field and buy time and deliver the ball and the money. Injured Tiger on the field at the 44-yard line. Slowly to get up is number 58 for LSU. And that is C.J. Fry. Check if that is Lionel Turner, as we see Lionel Turner. Once again, see, this is very odd. You don't see this very often. Now watch the people come downfield. This is this is what he's looking for. These are the eligible people. But instead, here's the guy who's actually covered. This is a great throw by Dean to get back across the grain, get him the ball, lower the shoulder, and get the first down. All right, Todd, do you keep throwing the ball at this point? Keep the pressure on that defense? I thought that they were running quite effectively early on in this drive, but as long as Williamson is on the field, he can strike fear at any time. First and ten. From the 45, and Jenkins on the option keeps it. Fear strikes out, tackled by Byron Dawson. Pick up of one, second and nine. And this is what this is what LSU has to do. And when they can do this, if they force them into the second and third longs, that's when they force Jenkins to make the kind of throws that up to this point he's been unable to make. Under 50% coming into this game. South Carolina's offense has been averaging about 25 points per game, about 355 yards per contest, and they've rushed the ball just about 170 yards per game. Looking at second and nine from the 44. And a timeout, South Carolina will burn one here. And Corey Jenkins will come over and talk with Team Holmes. All right now, South Carolina, the ball and the lead. Premium tires don't have to be expensive. Our 70,000-mile premium Futura Touring tires aren't expensive. They start at just $35.99 each. $35.99 each is a great deal. Futuras are some of the best tires made. They just cost less. Yeah, boys, we're car people.
husband is dead and a fortune is missing. I do have it. Yes, you do. You just don't know you've got it. On October 25th, the fun is uncovering the truth. Mm. The truth about Charlie. Rated PG-13 at theaters Friday. Wow. That is so cool. Can I do it again? Sure. Go get one, boy. Okay, so where does he get him? Yeah. I don't know. Get down! For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Oh, that's a first. Make it a Bud Light. Introducing Crest Rejuvenating Effects. It helps keep your smile looking and feeling younger, longer. It strengthens enamel, whitens teeth, and refreshes your gums with a tingly sensation. Crest Rejuvenating Effects. I'll take it. Back in Baton Rouge, where South Carolina has taken a little of a gumbo out of LSU here in the first half. As on the opening drive, Troy Williamson, the 61-yard touchdown pass from Corey Jenkins. And you can see the ESPN2 game track, total yards. Nearly 2-1. 15 rushes and 6 passes for South Carolina. On second and nine. Jenkins, reverse, Leroy Williamson, a wall in front of him, and plowing ahead, knocked out of bounds, at the 22-yard line by Randall Gay, a pickup of 22 yards, and that gambling, Lou Holtz, is showing some razzle-dazzle. The old Stanford reverse is what this is called, everybody's anticipating, of course, this is the quarterback, you know, he's going to come this direction, run the option, we've seen that a million times, instead, here he comes from the other side, all the white shirts are going in this direction, now look at the blockers, look at all the red shirts up front, Williamson actually could have done a little bit better job utilizing his blockers, but let's not forget, he is a true freshman, but he is without a doubt their big play guy. Eight first downs for the South Carolina offense here, on first and ten from the 22. And here is the handoff, Andrew Pettick, and Pettick picks up two, it'll be second and eight, Brady James with his fourth tackle of the football game for LSU. A little bit shell-shocked right now is the defense, as we saw yards per game allowed in the season. Rush defense already over 100 yards, and Brady James isn't very happy with himself or his compatriots. Second and eight for the 20. The pitch, it's to Ryan Brewer. And the Ohio native met at the 20-yard line, a pickup of one by Brady James, who was there once again. And again, LSU taking some chances, going with run blitzes. LSU, is, foul that time. they had yielded only 10 points all season long in the first quarter. Well, Brady James does a great job of running behind the blocks and getting Brewer in the backfield. Number 11 is all over the field. Brewer had ankle surgery in the offseason. He's hurt in the Outback Bowl and had surgery in Birmingham, Alabama. And it's been a little bit of a slow wheel back, but doing better. 13th play of the drive after the fourth down pass. Third and seven. Shotgun formation. Here comes the pressure. Gets it away. It is complete to James Atkinson. And the St. Louis, Missouri native picks up one yard, and that's it. It's a penalty marker. They're on the field right now. They may go against South Carolina. Atkinson hasn't played in quite a while, and it shows. The break screen is for you to go in the middle and follow your blockers. He comes back to the outside where he has no friends, and thus it was only a short game. Oh, boy. Much for that. That's it goes against the LSU. What a mistake. Turner, the tight end, are pushing the Tigers off the line of scrimmage. 
Horton and Williams and Shane Hall pulling out. Pinnock goes in, 255 pounds. 14 to 3, upset Bruin. You mean you believe it? Sure. Why not? Reincarnation. It's like being recycled. Yeah, you could say that. Introducing the Baja. Part car, part truck. Say, haven't we met before? Maybe in a past life. It's a totally new Subaru. You may have met in a past life. When you get it, you get it. The new all-wheel drive Baja from Subaru. Ladies and gentlemen, top them off! Welcome to the 21st century, Mr. Mixon. It's new Crestone Quick Fill Antifreeze. Quick Fill? It's perfectly pre-mixed for topping off, so you're guaranteed the right balance every single time. No more mixing, no more mess, and no more hassle. Better luck next time, sport. She makes it look so easy. It's already easy. I make it look good. Crestone Quick Fill Antifreeze. It's Crestone season made easy. Yes, who? Hello? Hello, Mr. Storm. The dreaded telemarketer. It's, it's strong. Telemarketers got your number? Get the Telus app, and soon those annoying calls will just about stop altogether. Available at stores everywhere. Consider this. New Shell gasoline is specially formulated to help prevent deposits in your engine. And a clean engine performs better. Is it any wonder, then, why so many drivers choose Shell? Max Kellerman knows sports. Just ask him. Around the Horn, a full contact sports show, premieres Monday, October 28th at 5 Eastern on ESPN. Well, it's easy to be a South Carolina fan right now when you can come into Tiger Stadium in front of a loud, noisy throng and march the ball 96 yards for a touchdown. Life is good. It's sweet for Gamecock fans. And, and no fluke. It wasn't as if 80 of that came on a screenplay or some big play. They just dominated up the line of scrimmage. 116 yards rushing now for the Gamecocks. Joey Bowers kicking off. It is high and about four yards deep as Henderson will bring it out. Henderson the worm across the 35 and up to the 37-yard line. Devery Henderson with a fine return out of his end zone. A 38-yard return. We mentioned that they were dominant in terms of running the ball, but there were two very key plays. In this case, Logan Deans, excuse me, Tyler Deans, the punter, goes over to Martin for the first down on the fake punt. And of course, what appeared to be just a little bit of a mystery late hit here. This is in slow motion. I don't know, because that's not the helmet. That's his forearm. I would have kept the pocket. I would have kept it in my pants, but nonetheless, touchdown for the Gamecocks instead of a field goal attempt. On first and ten, Randall rolling, throwing, and completing the football in Gamecock territory to Michael Clayton. First down for LSU, a pickup of 25 yards. Michael Clayton, the leading receiver with 24 catches coming into this game at 6'4", 190 pounds. He is their possession guy. And now down 11 points, Jimbo Fisher, the offensive corner for LSU, has decided, hey, you know what? We've got to see now whether or not this kid can deal with some adversity. Well, you saw Henderson bring it out of the end zone. That gave you an idea that they understand the gravity of what's going on right now. They've got to try and get back in this ball game. Well, they're second in the nation in kickoff returns. That's one of their big plays. Why not? First and 10 from the 37-yard line. This will be a motion penalty. In all probability, that goes against LSU. A little bit of movement. Brandon Hurley, the fullback, it looked like he was moving before he should have. Penalty number six for 43 yards against the Tigers. Tonight at 10 o'clock on ESPN, Tyrone Willingham and Notre Dame looking, thinking about a national title as they take on Chance Harris and Air Force in the Battle of the Unbeatens in Colorado Springs at almost 7,000 feet on a night where the temperatures are in the 30s. College Football Saturday brought to you by the U.S. Postal Service on ESPN. Carlisle Holiday versus Chance Harris. I like it. I like it too. Here is the pitch on first down. Running room to the 27, Dominic Davis. How quick did he hit the hole? Tackled by Jonathan Martin. He picked up 15 in a first down. You get a chance to see his body up close, number 31. After last year, he knew that he was going to have to carry the ball a little bit more. That's not a scat back. He's getting 19 yards per punt return. Number 31 is 6220, and I'm telling you, I'm 46 years of age, but I could have run through that hole. That was a nice 
nice job of the corner of the back by Rob Sale and Rodney Reed. With Davis on special teams so much, does that take some gas out of him? No doubt. Latter part of the game? Hey, he's young and resilient. It's all good. On first and 10 from the 26 straight ahead. And it is a pickup of uh, about five yards, so second and five. Let's go to Stacey Pates along the sidelines. Stacey? Well, I have a special guest, Eric Randall. He's the brother of Marcus Randall. He was the head coach while Marcus was in school and also uh, actually Marcus Spears. He coached Marcus Spears and also his younger brother as well. Talk about what you said to your brother preparing him because this was his first start. Well, I told him to play the game as, as he's always done in, in this case because football is football. Make sure you manage the game, get your pre-snap reads, and make sure that each handoff that you protect the football. That's the bottom line. Protect the football, you got a better chance of coming out on top. He seems quite poised right now. Was he nervous at all? How was his mental preparation? No, in talking with Marcus, he was not nervous. I'm probably a little bit more nervous than he is in my family, but uh, he was real he was real relaxed. Uh, he's, been, he's been waiting his turn, and uh, now he has the opportunity to step in and, and try to lead the title to victory. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Boy, Southern University's had some good football teams over the years. They really have. We've seen them in the Heritage Bowl in Atlanta over the years. Really some outstanding talent, always well coached. That young man has made some plays up to this point, but he's also had some problems. The number of procedure penalties. That ball right there, fortunately for him, was fumbled forward out of bounds. He needed to come between the tackles on that quarterback draw. And if we get a chance later, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the wristband that he has. It made Tom Maddie's look <laughs> miniature. Tom Matty, there's a record at that. But it was huge for the Baltimore Colts with a wristband. He's got plays on the front and the back of that. Third down conversions over. Over two for LSU on 39 from the 25. Quick drop and it's incomplete. Swinging it out to Devery Henderson and it's incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. He wasn't in a. He didn't have to hurry. He didn't have to hurry. And with John Corbello with a 45 yarder already this year, now nine for 11. And they've got to kick the field goal here. This makes sense. Uh, Corbello is already hit from 42 and this one will be from. 42 as well, so matching or dueling 42-yard field goals. No win tonight here in Baton Rouge. And here is the kick. It is hit the crossbar and no good. Well, it was dead center. It needed about another half yard to be able to clear the hit, to uh, clear the crossbar, but John Corbello did not get it. As it would have been good from about 41, but 42 was too long. We're in the second quarter. Carolina continuing to lead LSU 14-3. Week 7 is here, and the countdown crew is feeling punchy. YMCA. We'll talk to Mr. Sharpie himself. Is that a pin? He had a pin in his sock. <laughs> Meet Brett Barb's backup. I didn't know I had one. Enough with the jokes, please, will you? Ford examines the Ricky Williams effect. There he goes! Bye-bye, Ricky! Plus, John Madden had a closer look at the 49ers and Saints. Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Need some smart advice on how to accessorize your vehicle or get into some new tires? Then come to the place that has it all. Kurtz has the works. Our auto specialists can outfit your truck or your whole fleet. Choose from our huge selection of top brand accessories. Plus, Kurtz service is reliable, certified in brakes and alignment. Come see why we're the finest independent tire and accessory dealer in the South. 9555 Airline Highway or online at KurtzFX.com. Kurtz at V-Watch, you'll find quality name brand furniture at low, low prices every day. That's why smart shoppers from all over South Louisiana have been coming here for over 40 years. You won't find how fresh your salespeople are a fancy showroom at V-Watch. Just 30,000 square feet of great furniture values and a friendly atmosphere. No big city prices, no big city hassle. So take a drive out to the country and come see us at V-Watch Furniture, Highway 190 in Livingston, where quality furniture really does cost less. ESPN2's College Football Saturday Night, brought to you by Subaru, the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. When you get it, you get it. And by Presto, the number one name in antifreeze, provides the tough defense your engine needs to combat cold weather. Downtown Baton Rouge, where football is life. Football and food, I think, uh, in about that order. <laughs> I can attest to that. Mike Anderson and Reese Chris, they 
25-yard line. Again, straight ahead. First down for Dacus Kerman. And Kerman across the 40-yard line, down to the 42, a gain of 16, tackled by Demetrius Hookman and Randall Gay. Surprise, surprise, Todd. Really is. Really is. The offensive, the offensive line continues to be outstanding. Take a look at Dacus Kerman. Follows behind. Boy, that's a great block on the point of attack by the fullback. Gets into the secondary right away. They've got 133 rushing yards right now in this proud defense of LSU to give. And some running room for Corey Jenkins. He'll pick up maybe four yards, second and six. Well, as we go back to the missed field goal, Ben Wilkerson is the starting center. There's the, there's the center. Beck can't quite get it down. Corbella has to follow through. You can see the ball is just not there. And the result, you can see the, you can see the body language by Corbello. He knows he's not able to get enough juice on it. The ball spins quickly. That's the reason why he hit the crossbar. Well, they were really, you know, fortunate to have any kind of attempt, given, given the way that was going. But even with the bad snap, that's what the holders do. That's what they practice on. He's got to get it down. Second and five from the 46, shotgun formation. And they keep it right up the gut. And this time, not much for Corey Jenkins. He'll bring up two, and it will bring up third in about three yards. But see, this is what we've been having. Have you noticed that, Jeff? Third and three, third and four, third and six. They have not been coming up third and nine and third and ten. And as a result, South Carolina has been able to dictate its offense to LSU's defense, not the other way around. Well, you're really right. As you take a look at the LSU total defensive graph here, wow. and, and it really gives you a sense, too, I think, that you don't know what to expect, expect from the offense of South Carolina. They have really mixed it up. We'll see what happens here. On third and three, they're one for four on third down conversions. From the shotgun formation, four receivers. Going long, near sideline, man out there, diving attempt, it's incomplete, as James Atticus, uh, Atkinson maybe should have had that ball, Todd, he had his hands on it, it, it would have been a very tough catch. No babies about it, Atkinson didn't think he was going to get the ball, he didn't think Jenkins had the arm strength to get it down there, and as he's running his route, he's loping a little bit. Take a look, watch number 88, and watch about the middle of the route. Right here, he's just kind of coasting a little bit, kind of coasting, kind of coasting. Now he sees the ball in thrown. Now he accelerates. He's got to be running the entire time, and as a result, he cost the game, cost a big play. And the punt with Dominic Davis deep, and it's a fair catch at the nine-yard line. That's an odd decision. Fair catch there. 40-yard punt. South Carolina leads. about a hamper. It's one of the few things that bring so much joy. Made fresh, hot off the grill, all juicy and delicious with fresh toppings so it tastes great. It lifts your spirits and makes everything okay. That's the kind of hamper that we make. Wendy's Classic Double with Cheese. It's better here. And now Wendy's pickup window is open late so you can eat great even late. Old Navy Painter's Pants are one of a kind. A better price you'd be hard-pressed to find. Quality construction, that's our guarantee. Old Navy Painter's... You're the pants for me. The price... Is nice. He'll wear... This pair... Wow, they're just $15 to $20 for men and boys. Old Navy, we are there. of bottled water has forced you to take drastic measures? Try pure filtered water. It's just as good as bottled at a price that's ten times less. Pure water filters. Your water should be pure. The pure water filter. So easy to install and use, anyone can do it. Pure water filters. Your water should be pure. <laughs> He had been pacing. Don't got it. I really wanted to get that for you. In the first quarter, that man, 10 paces, 165 yards. Those are the stats up to the minute. He's still my pounding holes. First and 10 from the 9, Dominique Davis. It's a pickup of 3. Second and 7, Lance Lowry on the stop. There he is. There we go. Now he's got it going. So many favorite quotes from him over the years. I always loved the line a couple of years ago. We could never get on Noah's Ark. We don't have two of anything. <laughs> Well, he's got two touchdowns.
touchdowns, leading 14 to 3. Well, he can't be he, he can't be too upset because he mentioned coming in, he told our Stacy Pates the idea that you know what, people are going to get to see our defense too, and up to this point they've only given up three points. Second and seven for LSU to pitch and coming it back in. Missed tackle by South Carolina and Dominic Davis is run out of bounds just short of the 20-yard line. It's a gain of nine. Jeremiah Garrison, the middle linebacker from Belton, South Carolina, is there. And in a couple of runs we've talked about, great job by the offensive line. Davis that time did it all by himself. There's penetration into the backfield. Watch the number of people he makes miss. Runs through the tackles. Dominic Davis now at 220 pounds, as I pointed out earlier. Not just a scat back. He's tough. Just a little bit short. It, uh, we've got a kind of a modest angle on this. It looks like he may be short, but we'll see as they stretch this out. just 
to manage the game and hope that the defense puts them in good situations. Well, he's managed the game okay. They've got a rusher that has over 60 yards. All of those things are good. But their defense, so highly touted coming into this game, has not risen to the occasion. But the defense on the other side, because we get a chance to see Charlie Strong, defensive coordinator for South Carolina. He's got a great sense of humor. He's done pretty well. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Well, they had some funny stories about Lou Holtz. Many of which we probably won't tell. First and 23 from the <laughs> 25. Play action. In trouble. Getting the football away. The catch is made by Dominic Davis. How did he do that? Off to the 38-yard line. Tackled by Rashad Faison. It's a gain of 17. We talked about Langston Moore as being an abnormal nose tackle. And he was in this case. But once again, a flag is down. And you had to know that there were... You had to know that there were linemen downfield. You just knew that because that play was completely discombobulated. Usually it's a 1,001, 1,002. You throw the screen. In this case, it was 1,004 and 5. And Nick Saban has to be picking himself. An eligible receiver downfield by the offense. Five-yard penalty. Three first down. We should say, though, that Langston Moore, number 57, that terrific nose tackle, is the one that created all the problems. That's number 57 in pursuit. Now, the ball should have been gone by now. And, of course, the ball now, instead of the normal speed pass, look at how long it's in the air. You can see a number of white shirts already downfield. Ben Wilkerson, the center in particular. Well, first and long, first and 28. Well, looks like about 27 now. We'll get it right. Out of the shotgun formation. Computer not working to that big a number. Joseph Adai. And nothing there. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now. Hi, Jeff. Checking in out west. Jason Thomas and UNLV against BYU. The bootleg breaks the tackle. Takes it in. Six-yard touchdown run. UNLV up 9-3 on the Cougars. Meanwhile, Bowling Green trying to remain unbeaten up on Western Michigan by seven in the fourth. Well, Todd, I have to be honest with you. When I saw Brigham Young against Syracuse on ESPN and then uh, we had the Hawaii game, I thought they were going to be a much better football team than they have evolved here in 2002. Well, next time you make that analysis, be dishonest with me, would you please? <laughs> with your son, I'll make that, that pronouncement and leave you away from it. Second and 29, near side, it is complete. The catch is made by Reggie Robinson. He's up to the 37-yard line. It's a gain of 18 yards for LSU. Monday Night Countdown previews ABC's Monday Night Football game and provides up-to-the-minute NFL news with Stuart Scott, Tom Jackson, Ron Jaworski, Sterling Sharp, and Chris Mortensen. Monday Night Countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Then join Al Michaels and John Madden as the 4-1 Colts take on the Steelers. Indianapolis travels to Pittsburgh. They'll look at some of the numbers on the Colts and the Steelers. Well, the big number right now for LSU is the fact that the clock is bleeding down. When this play started, there was over a minute, you know, as they shuffle up to try and get up, asking a lot once again of the young quarterback to manage time, but he, LSU offense has done it poorly here. Marcus Randall out of the shotgun. Here he has time, wants to go long. Up top, man out there, penalty marker, and the ball is dropped. Benny Brazil from Houston, Texas, the wide receiver, the freshman, couldn't hang on to the ball, but there's the penalty marker at the 28-yard line. A, a lot of pressure from Jeremiah Garrison on the quarterback, Marcus Randall. But they got what they wanted. Benny Brazil is another one of those absolute speedsters. Now, even if this is interference, we took it, we say 14.7 seconds remaining. That'll be a 15-yard gain. But having said that, it, they would have been a lot better off if Brazil could have made that That's catch. That's interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage and automatic first down. College game day coming up here at halftime, which is only 14 seconds away. That young man, that young man aided the track team in getting the NCAA championship. Watch to the outside. Number 17 is just flying down the field. Fooled completely is number 32, Dante Robinson. Coming over his shoulder, that's a difficult catch, but it has to be made. It has to be made. Brazil anchored the 4 by 100 meter relay team, which won the NCAA title and also ran a leg on a 4 by 400 And he was flying. 14 seconds left before halftime. South Carolina leads.
affect South Carolina waterways. We're developing plants that can actually pull toxins from the soil. Our research focuses on genes that prevent a normal colon cell from becoming a colon cancer. It's like a natural vacuum cleaner for toxic waste. My team wants to reduce heart disease in South Carolina. What I do... It's hard to describe in words. But it matters. It matters a lot. We're improving lives in South Carolina. That's our definition of education. First and ten for LSU. 14 seconds remain. Randall with time firing and the catch is incomplete along the LSU sideline. At about the 34-yard line, Henderson was the target, but pretty good coverage over there. So many wasted seconds here, Jeff, in the last two plays. So many wasted seconds. And of course, unfortunately for Randall, Brazil could not come up with the ball. They need to get down. I mentioned Corbello has a career long of 49 yards, so you figure that they need probably at this point at least 15 yards. Randall, 6 of 10, 103 yards. And they've got two timeouts, so he can throw the ball in the middle of the field. Second and 10. Eight seconds left. Shotgun formation. Across the middle, and it is caught! What a catch! Michael Clayton! Wow! Quick timeout! Jeremiah Garrison on the tackle for South Carolina. It's a gain of 17, and here comes John Corbello. What a strike! You know, just when we talk about this kid struggling and some of the mistakes he makes, he makes a throw like that. But again, credit, give credit where credit is due. Number 14 makes a great catch in between that DB sandwich. We welcome all the sailors and marines watching tonight's game in the dining facility at Iwakuni, Japan. America thanks you for all of you do. Well done. I, you know, I, I was looking at that name. I thought that might screw you up a little bit. <laughs> it, it did. I usually say Japan, but we got it right. Ah, oh, okay. Do you speak Japanese or? It's Mandarin you speak, I'm sorry. <laughs> I speak early for dinner, but I speak. <laughs> I'm with you too. I look at Corbello's numbers. Now, of course, the last, we mentioned the last field goal. Does it affect the kicker psychologically? I, I think it does, because now your security and your holder. The nice thing, though, about this timeout is that in this case, Wilkerson gets to wipe his hands off, get a little bit of a blow. I'm very surprised, really, that you have a regular player snapping. Usually, you want a specialist. That's why kicking is such a negative position. He hits from 42. You don't think about that. You think about the miss. This one from 47 yards out for John Corbello. The snap is good. So is the hold. And the kick wow. is the up and it is good. So as the clock runs out here in the second quarter, LSU gets on the board. 48-yard field goal by John Corbello. But Lou Holtz in South Carolina lead. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio right now. Hi, Jeff. Thank you very much. So a little momentum for LSU. Trying to get that offense going with Marcus Randall at the controls. And the Tigers trailing 14-6 at Death Valley uh, at home against uh, it's a pretty good football team they're finding out in South Carolina right now. Matt Weiner, Mark May, the college game day halftime report. We started the day with 10 unbeaten Division 1A teams. We knew one was going to lose because of Notre Dame and Air Force tonight. Well, we found another might have some trouble as well. That's Ontario Smith. Break and right for Oregon, 57 yards. They have himself on some Heisman boards after another good game today. 14-0 Ducks, but Arizona State had Andrew Walter. Justin Taplin on the other end. Second of the game, 39-35. Arizona State up, fourth quarter. Jason Fyatt, Sammy Parker. Second time they've hooked up, and we're tied at 42. Less than two minutes to play. Mike Barr, 29-yard field goal. So the Sun Devils take a three-point lead. Late fourth. Ducks trying to get something going. Five. Hit as he throws and picked off. Brett Hudson does the honors. And Arizona State knocks off number six, Oregon, 45-42. to Get this, Mark. Walter, a school record, 536 yards passing. School records for attempts and completions as well. And Oregon's 11-game win streak is over. Ontario Smith, as I mentioned, 172 rushing yards. He has gone over 100 each game this season. That certainly throws a wrench in Oregon's BCS plans for the moment. Yes, it does, but not Ontario Smith. Even though they lost the game, still put up huge numbers, 172 yards on the ground. In my opinion, he's still in the running for the Heisman Trophy. Elsewhere.
transfer in the SEC, for those watching this game, Florida, little pitch to Ernest Graham, Ingle Martin in a quarterback at that point, but for Rex Gross, memory has a banged up knee, and Florida on top, 23-7 to in that one, Alabama and Ole Miss, Crimson Tide cruises, 42-7, to so much for that number 22 ranking, San Antonio Beer ties the school record with five touchdown passes, Georgia, on homecoming, big over Vanderbilt, David Green, 319, and a couple of touchdown passes for the unbeaten Bulldogs. Well, coming up, lots of big games, including a big one of the Big 12. Chris Sims had this touchdown pass. Is it enough to beat Kansas State? Stick around and find out. Chris, Kirk, and Coach, ESPN Girls Game Day, Saturdays at 10.30. for just a dollar? How do you do it? What's your secret? Got it, Brock? You're in luck, because you can get a delicious, beefy, big and tasty or a McChicken sandwich for just a dollar every day at McDonald's.
closely there behind the eight ball in terms of the north. Kansas State needs this win today, and uh, right now Oklahoma has control of the south. Well, if you look at Oklahoma, they're the clear-cut winner in, in the Big 12 South. In my opinion, they're the best team in the entire Big 12, but you, you got to like Colorado. You know, Colorado's done an outstanding job this year. Here's Oklahoma, 7-0 overall. You know, they're one of the top one or two teams in the country. Obviously, they're number two, but you look at Texas A&M, they're finally getting it going in the conference, 5-2 and two overall. And Texas right now, I believe, is struggling just a little bit. I think that, you know, this is a very important game for Texas to see how they rebound off a loss to Oklahoma, but in my opinion, if you look at the Big 12, clear cut. Oklahoma's the best in the North or South when you get to the championship game, but in the North, I like Colorado right now. The way that Colorado and Gary Barnett's got this team going in the right direction. He always starts off slow, and that's bad for Colorado, but they always finish strong, and they love running the football behind Chris Brown, and I think that's a key for this Colorado offense. They have to maintain their poise and run the football and not get worried about close football games and starting to try to throw the ball if they have to. Continue to run the football. I love teams. They do what they do best. Colorado runs the football. They're not worried about throwing it 30 times a game. They're going to rush it 30, 40, 50 times a game. Big game coming up in two weeks, Oklahoma against Colorado. Then Oklahoma gets A&M. If they beat Nebraska, that could be for the South title. Just looking down the line as we uh, Oklahoma's as, as we're wont to do. All right, let's talk about some Big Ten. Big 42-yard touchdown. He is a big target for Wisconsin. Badgers up 14-13. Craig Krenzel, Ben Hartsock in the end zone. Buckeyes regain the lead 19-14 after a missed two-point conversion. Then it's surging. I thought this is a touchdown, but Chris Gamble comes from offense to defense. He comes up the intersection. That is what you call closing. And Ohio State closes 19-14. They got a huge third and long pass to Michael Jenkins, who has become a favorite target for Craig Krenzel. Krenzel throwing the ball well again today. Michigan and Purdue. Brandon Kirst, the true freshman, gets the start for Purdue over Kyle Orton. Keeps it there. Also passed for 182 yards. Four makers tied at seven. Then it's Kirst. the reverse. It's a crazy Michigan offense. Calvin Belton, does he step out? I think he did. I love the block by quarterback John Navarro leading the reverse into the end zone. John Navarro, you love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Wolverine's up 23-14. Later in the fourth, Kyle Orton now in a quarterback. Back to pass, goes across the middle, and that is picked by Zach Hoffman. And what else is new? The Wolverines win a tight game. 23rd win by seven points or less since 97. And Purdue, a hard luck loser again. Their five losses by a combined 22 points. Iowa and Indiana, Hawkeyes win again, keep them pressing, 24-8, Fred Russell, 100-yard day, and Penn State all over Northwestern. Larry Johnson just absolutely went nuts in this game. Huge day, easy game plan, just give the ball to Larry Johnson, had some tremendous runs in this game, you look at his numbers there, but he was even more impressive on the football field, they couldn't tackle. The 257, a school record, breaks Kurt Warner's old school rushing record for a single game, Northwestern shutout for the first time since 1993. All Gamecocks so far in Death Valley. They're looking pretty lively thanks to the running of Andrew Pinnock. Stay with us. More coming up.
South Carolina has the lead. This game and others building up to the most intriguing game of the night, Air Force and Notre Dame in Colorado Springs. High altitude, high stakes, October BCS implications. Chris Fowler leads our coverage with the game day crew in Colorado. Well, once every other blue moon, a couple unbeaten teams meet in late October here at the Air Force Academy. Great atmosphere building, a record crowd of watching Falcon Stadium. Of course, Notre Dame was unbeaten because of its defense. The Irish have openly targeted Air Force quarterback Chance Harris, the guy that nobody stopped this season. Leads the nation with 15 rushing touchdowns. The Irish confident they can continue to create the takeaways, but they are very respectful of this Air Force offense. They definitely run the options to perfection. You know, they, they do what they do very well. And their players have the confidence to play at a speed that no one can duplicate. We're not going to show them the same look the entire game. This is not a style of offense that you can freelance again. Uh, anytime they run the option, you have to be the, the soundest that you've been. Don't have to play your dream of watching college football. You know, we just dream about being you know, a national TV in front of everybody playing a big time game, so it's pretty exciting. You're not human unless you think Notre Dame is a special game. And, I mean, I just can't wait to go out and play and, you know, see those gold helmets. And, but the thing is, we're not going to let the mystique get to us. Lee and Kirk join me. I believe them. They're not caught up in the mystique, but it's also a pretty good defense they're facing in Notre Dame. It is a very good defense, and it's a defense that's only had a week to prepare for the triple option, and that's what makes it very tough for Notre Dame. They've seen a lot of different offenses tonight. They're going to see the triple option, and Chance Harridge has been able to run it very effectively this year. The triple option requires a few reads. The dive read here on the defensive end, he comes down, collapses on the fullback. Harridge makes the good read to come to the outside. Now he has the pitch read as an outside linebacker, but he makes it look in some slow motion and makes it look very easy. They're able to pick up a big gain here, and the receivers do a nice job of blocking downfield. Now, Notre Dame is, is the best defense that Air Force has seen. The toughest defense that Chance Harridge has gone up against is Utah. They'll take Chance Harridge out of this game, and Notre Dame's defense will will the Irish once again to a victory. I like Notre Dame to win. That's a good pick. A very good pick. Now, let's take a look at how you can try to slow down that option play. And this is the what you try to do. You take your defensive line and you keep the offensive line off those linebackers because the linebackers have got to flow from inside out. Did you notice how many times the guys cut back with big yardage? Take that away with the linebackers. Second, you move the free safety and the strong safety up either in the eight or nine man front. But be careful. If you do that, they throw it over your head. Now, the key thing about this situation is it's hard to practice against the Air Force option. So I wouldn't be surprised if Air Force doesn't move the ball down the field and score early, then the Irish will adjust, but the Air Force wins this football game with field goals. All right, the Mercury drop in, the wind kicking up. It'll be tough in the Ooh. kicking game and the passing game. You guys are going to need coach. Yeah, you. All right, guys, thank you very much. We're toasty warm here in the studio, by the way. Still some business to be decided. Gamecocks on top of LSU, 14-6. We're back out to Baton Rouge. Lee Corso, future sportscaster star. Uh, Kirk, you can take the helmet off. Oh, okay. And we're ready. Okay. Mind if I stand? Yo. Testing. One, two, three. one-minute audition tape to the Discover card gets you on Game Day Challenge. If you win, you'll appear on College Game Day and go to the BCS National Championship. Visit your local Best Buy for details. And when you're at Best Buy, use your Discover card. You'll earn a cashback bonus award and automatically be entered for a chance to win college football and home entertainment prizes. Just another way it pays to discover. <laughs>
person who uh, is very customer oriented and when uh, you sit down and talk with her about it she knows her product very well and she really works hard to please the customer both before the sale and after the sale. I am ecstatic over the uh, service department and the sales force headed by uh, Cal Bradley, a friend. Uh, she has, she's charismatic, she services the needs of the clientele. Treads and Care Tire Company offers a full range of auto repair services and quality tires. We now offer the high mileage, fuel efficient Toyo tires. The new Toyo 800 Ultra with a 100,000 mile limited warranty may even outlast your vehicle. Treads and Care Tire Company has five convenient locations to better serve local families. For quality Toyo tires and other great values, Treads and Care Tire Company has the tires you need and the service you want. Washington USC SC 4121 Carson Palmer 348 SC needs some help from Washington State to lose to stay in the Pac-10 race down the stretch. Cal and UCLA. Corey Poss has left the game with a right leg injury. We don't have any other information. He was being beaten up by the Cal defensive front. It is a 10-10 game. That one in the third quarter. NC State remains unbeaten, squeaking past Duke 24-22. Philip Rivers, another. He's your guy. Another great game. Game. He's going to be in the Heisman Trophy. He's on my list for the Heisman Trophy. There you go. He's on Mark's list. Vatek, no trouble with Rutgers, 35-14. At least the uh, State University of New Jersey scored against Rutgers or Virginia Tech this year. Lee Suggs moves to second on the school's all-time scoring list. He and Kevin Jones combined for 300 yards plus in rushing. And Bowling Green, one of those 10 unbeatens to start the day right now, tied at 42 with the Broncos of Western Michigan. Eight seconds left in that one. They may have to win that one in overtime. We're back out to Baton Rouge after the break. Second and 
47 now from the 47. And the handoff is straight up the middle to the 45, Dominic Davis. And it is no gain. Let's check in with Stacy Pates. I spoke with uh, Coach Holtz at the break, and he told me that he's more concerned with his defense. Yes, they struck early. Yes, they've been moving the ball well, but he absolutely thinks his defense did a poor job. Coach Saban said they simply didn't play well. They got confused on some of the Gamecocks' formations and gave them too many opportunities to stay alive. Todd, I go back to what you said at the beginning of the broadcast, how Lou Holtz lives for these kinds of games, these big games in big stadiums against big-time opponents. Two big plays, remember the fake punt in that reverse contributed to score. Third and seven from the 45 for LSU. Firing, completing, and enough for the first down to Michael Clayton. The drive continues. It's a gain of 11. Fine throw by Marcus Randall, tackled by Muhammad. Clayton continues to come up with the clutch catches, and Randall, you can see his confidence. They really needed to get something going here. They could not afford the luxury of going three and out. And let's not underestimate what happened there with Dominic Davis. So many times in the course of a drive, you just assume that it's a lot of it is the offense. The fact that he was able to get out past the 40-yard line with the kickoff return is huge. The importance of special teams cannot be underplayed. First and 10 now for LSU in South Carolina territory at the 47-yard line. Play action, good fake by Randall going up top man out there, and it's incomplete. At the 24-yard line, Solomon Lee was covered by Jamesha Jackson, but he had a couple yards on Jackson, and if that ball would have been there, it would have been a big game. They had exactly what they wanted. They wanted man for man, and Lee had him by a couple of steps. Here's the touch. You know what? You can do this a million times in practice, but in the game, it just is not the same. We certainly would like to have that one back. Second and ten for LSU. Randall for the injured Matt Mock. In the first half, 7 of 11, 120, now 8 of 13, 128. Shotgun with time, swings it out, near side, Dominic Davis. And Davis plowing ahead to the 43-yard line. George Gauze is there to gain a four. I don't think, I don't think any time tonight Dominic Davis has been tackled by the first guy. He seems to always make the first guy miss. Really, that personifies what a great punt returner is, making that first guy miss. He's got to be home for a guy like this in the National Football League. Huh? No doubt. No doubt. Nearly nine yards per touch, not too bad. Third down conversions, two of five for LSU facing... Third and six. Anderson in motion. Rolling to his right is Randall. Firing on the run, and it's incomplete. Penalty marker is down. There's another one at the 33-yard line. Reggie Robinson was the wide receiver, and he was uh, covered by Jamesha Jackson. That may be who the penalty goes against. That, that may be the case, but it certainly appeared that for a minute he was going to be able to get away with it. That was a very late flag. Lou Holtz, not in motion. That's a Mr. Terrence, cut the defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. But once again, the inexperience of Randall. As he rolled out, take a look at all the room. Look at the grass. Now, he could take off and get that first down. And actually, the thing that's difficult about it is that he's going for the ball, but he just doesn't see the receiver. That's Jermaine Lemon. you got to drop the flag. First and ten. Here's the pitch. It's Davis, far side, and turning the corner. Getting some yards for Dominic Davis. A pickup of seven. George Goss is there along with Muhammad. South Carolina versus LSU here in Baton Rouge. And it has been a Carolina half leading 14-6. But now it is LSU on the prowl offensive. Let's not under, underestimate, too, getting the field goal before the half. That had to do a lot for LSU as we get a chance to see Matt Mock. Once again, with the, they say keep it elevated. <laughs> Second and four. An odd formation. Davis, the give, and spun down at the 25-yard line after three. I wonder, if Nick, I wonder if Nick Saban pulled Davis aside at halftime and said to number 31, he said, look, you know what? You, you just can't get tired, okay? We know that you're going to have a lot. You just can't get tired. I mean, he can. You know, he has been absolutely the crux of this offense. Yes, some receivers have made plays, but they're so dependent upon number 31. After a victory like Florida last week, you win in the swamp 36-7. Are you down this week? That's a, that's a very good point. Psychologically, you think that he beat Florida in the swamp, he could beat anybody. But South Carolina, clearly unafraid. On third and one, straight ahead, first down for LSU. Pounding and shining is Dominic Davis. Down to the 12-yard line, it's a pick. 
pickup of 10 yards, tackled by Mohamed. The thing that Davis does so effectively here, you see him slow down a little bit, but when he slows down, the feet continue to move. That's why he break tackle. Watch number 31 and watch the feet. But the initial, right here he gets hit. Now the feet keep moving, the feet keep moving, the feet keep moving. Well, I tell you what, that's the very thing that running back coaches always teach. Keep your feet moving because when that happens, you go through the arm tackles. And once again, you see the power of number 31. It is the deepest penetration for LSU on first and 10 from the 12. Here's the pitch. And Joseph Adai, not much going there. A fine job by the South Carolina defense. Jonathan Martin is there, the safety. Taking a look at the numbers on Davis, Todd, 17 carries for 92 yards and all of his special teamwork. He is the original marathon man here at Baton Rouge. Well, you saw there that he needed a break, and he does, and the coaches have to be aware of that. But, you know, this is crunch time now. You know what? This is strange because this is actually the first time they've been in the red zone all game long. Second and ten from the 12. Tenth play of the drive coming. Double tight end set. Here comes the option. Keeping it is Marcus Randall. Randall, touchdown LSU. A 12-yard touchdown sprint for Marcus Randall on the option. He made the right decision. And Solomon Lee, the fullback, puts a terrific block out front for him. I have, we have dwelled on his inexperience, but right there, he was able to make the right play, but he can't get too excited because it appears that LSU is going to go for two. You like that decision? No, nah, it's too early in the game for that. But then again, Nick Saban's probably thinking to himself, points are at a premium. So we gotta gotta give it a shot while we can. Alright. To tie the ball game. With four wide outs. Henderson in motion. a start there is a finish and in the journey between there are dreams the ncaa hall of champions keeps these dreams alive for you more than a museum the ncaa hall of champions takes you on an interactive journey relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of the student athlete at the ncaa hall of champions you'll find something for every fan discover what it means to be a champion the journey begins inside
second by Gauze. Gauze with some running room and hanged out of bounds short of the 30-yard line, a return of 20 yards, Andrea. Now here's an interesting play, and this is why I love this play. It's called a fade stop. You've got the wide receiver now, Clayton, who's going to run up the field and get a chance. I'll show you when. Right now you're freezing. You're freezing. Now see, the defensive back, in this case, Muhammad's got to be thinking, oh, he's throwing the fade route. He's throwing the fade route. No. Instead, he throws quickly back. He's already back, or he's got no shot. That was a play that I remember that was invented by Terry Bradshaw and John Selworth back in the 70s, and Randall is ecstatic. There really was a combination. They, they really did run that play, didn't they? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. On first and ten, plenty of time going up top in the double coverage. Picked off! Intercepted! LSU's Demetrius Pumpin, working on Michael Agees, comes up with the football. So from points to a turnover, big momentum shifts towards LSU. Jenkins has not made many mistakes, but this is one of them. This play took too long to develop. He needs to throw it sooner. Here's the fake. Now here's the other fake. Nobody is fooled. Now walking right there, he should have stepped back and thrown it. Instead, he waited too long. That gave the defensive back the opportunity to come back in coverage, and Hookman was not fooled, able to come up with the interception.
say, though, that it's interesting that you point that out because that gives him a break. That gives him a rest, and still the offense was able to succeed without him. Brandon Hurley has checked into the football game. Second and eight from the 15.
visit with Gene Stallings once about that trip up to the junction. It's, that was an interesting story. Ben. John Corbello kicking off. South Carolina having a tough time coming up with the football. Matthew Thomas coming out and making the most of nothing up to the 12-yard line. Here's Matt Weiner. Hi, Jeff. We told you about Cadillac Williams' injury, and Auburn will certainly miss him, but Ronnie Brown having himself a day. Takes the pitch. And he'll go 54 yards for the touchdown. He's got 140 rushing yards and now three total touchdowns. So Auburn down by two, goes for two. Jason Campbell will roll out and keep it. And the Tigers have tied this game up at 23 in the fourth. Always a lot of depth at running back at all. Wow. That's a tradition. First and 10 from the 13th. Three wideouts to the top of your screen. Andrew Pennant. To the left. Corey Jenkins keeping the football and the defense answers the challenge. Lejeune is there. The strong safety is fifth tackle of the ball game. Pickup of three, second and seven. Just as we talked about how important it was to get good field position on the kickoff return. In this case, you know, it was a bad decision on the part of Matthew Thomas. He could have let the thing roll into the end zone and they'd have had a touchback. Instead, ill-advisedly, he runs out and the Gamecocks start from far back in their own spot. Second and seven. 17-14. The handoff, and down goes Andrew Pennock for no gain. Back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go to Stacey Pace. There are several similarities between Nick Saban and Lou Holtz. Both are natives of West Virginia, both former players and graduates of Kent State University. Both former assistant coaches at Ohio State. Both gentlemen have NFL coaching experience. Holtz head coach of the Jets in 76, and Saban an assistant of the Houston Oilers. Quite a lot of similarities, even though this is their first competition as head coaches. Third and eight. Lou Holtz watching. In trouble. And down go Corey Jenkins. The LSU defense is alive. Melvin Oliver, the left end. From Opelika, Alabama, making the stop. A loss of five. And you saw it break down slowly but surely. The coverage was excellent in the secondary. And Jenkins, not unlike Richard Gere, an officer and a gentleman, I got no place to go! <laughs> the Knights Obscure reference brought to you by... Tyler Dean, the punter. Dominic Davis, after 42. going to have good field position. Davis at the South Carolina 49, a 42-yard punt, a five-yard return, but the Tigers have great field position, and they have a 17-14 lead. Tonight on Sports Center, Showtime, Angels, Giants take center stage in the World Series. Could one retired NFL player be making a return and complete college football highlights? Sports Center, after the game on ESPN2. On an all-new fake borrowing deal. Yeah! Team Kobe looks to the west. Let's go. Let's leave right now. While Team Contact heads south. Can I get the hell out of Memphis? Just trying to get another ride. All right, here I go. Fake borrowing deal. The begging continues Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. Score big with the winning team at Salisbury Dodge City. We've got extra point prices on the biggest selection of Dodges in Louisiana. 2003 Caravan, $16,990. One grand Caravan with rear air now, $21,490. Two Caravan FXT, just $20,490. And get a free portable DVD or VHS package with every Caravan. And watch that pickup, $21,990. We're number one. And so are you when you buy smart from the number one Dodge dealer in Louisiana. Salisbury Dodge City. Buy smart. Our lifetime is full of important memories. Memories that need to be captured, shared, enjoyed, and preserved. That's why you trust your memories to Kader's. Introducing Mitsubishi's new 2003 line of high-definition big screen. And exclusively at Kader's, Mitsubishi's best, the Diamond Series. Value and trust from the people who know. Kader's. The choice is clear. They love their Tigers here in Baton Rouge. And the second half is a celebration of Tiger football, much different from the way they were feeling in the first two quarters. But what a 
big difference it is here in the second half. Look at the yardage. South Carolina has yet to get into, into a positive integer, whereas LSU now has 284 total yards. Marcus Randall on first down strike. And first down, Cheryl Myers making the grab. Gain of 18. Let's go to Stacey Pace. Eric Randall, your little brother, has caused quite a spark in this quarter. What do you attribute that to? Well, I'm contributing to him being patient and also uh, listening to his coaches and staying with the program and, and, and making things happen. Uh, it's not just him, we have other, 10 other guys out there that's making it happen, and I'm so proud of all these guys. I know them pretty good. Is this the kind of quarterback he's always been? It's just the LSU fans are just now getting to see it? I think so. I think they're just getting an opportunity to see Marcus Randall open up. He can throw, he can run, and uh, he's been around the game since he was 6 and 7, so he's had a lot of people to, to, to help him learn the game, and, and he's displaying it tonight. He's winning a lot more fans tonight, too. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Randall hit, and it is no gain as he is sandwiched by Jonathan Martin as they get to him. He has been a lot more patient, hasn't he? He has, but in that situation, he needed to pitch. <laughs> Instead, he gets a Gamecock sandwich. But he has been a little bit more patient. He's made good decisions. With the exception of the one throw, which should have been picked off, that led to the leading field goal. He's been throwing quite well here in the second half. Second and ten. Here's the handoff. It's to Sharon Carey. And Carey picks up a couple of yards. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio right now. Jeff, Kansas State and Texas. Big game in the Big 12. It has been nip and tuck. El Roberson buying some time. Looks for Thomas Hill. He's got him and he just gets into the end zone. Ties it up at 14. They've since swapped turnovers. And Bowling Green remains unbeaten. They beat Western Michigan in overtime. Josh Harris, four touchdowns on the day. I love that Bowling Green story. I did not know their uniforms were orange and brown. I played them back in, clear back in 1975. Yeah, that, that was a different color combo. On third and seven, from the shotgun formation, is Marcus Randall. Here comes the blitz. Gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. Man, they were coming after him in a hurry. Langston Moore was all over Marcus Randall. And Langston Moore, that stud, has been in the backfield frequently throughout the game. Number 57, we talked about him early on in terms of his abilities as a nose tackle. He has been in the face. Here comes the blitz. You can see number 57 shrugs off the one man. You just can't block this guy with one man. And certainly Randall can attest to that. Langston Moore out of Charleston, South Carolina. This is a 44-yard attempt for John Corbello. He's hit from 37, from 48. Missed from 46, hit from 42. This one's along the way. It's up. And it is good. But the penalty marker is down. by Saban. They rough the kicker, so he wants, is he going to take points off the board? And I think he's going to do that. Would you do that? Yes. I, I do it for two reasons. One is the obvious, the chance of a touchdown, and the other one is psychologically. You don't want to tell your offense, well, we, we're just going to settle for a field goal. whether or not it's running into or roughing the kicker, whether it's going to be 5 or 15, and that's what they're discussing. And if it's 15, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Watch at the end and watch the right leg of Corbello. You want to lay out and make a play, but once again, it's just a bad decision on the part of Matthew Thomas. Remember earlier special teams, he was the one that did not get the ball into the end zone for the touchback. And Thomas, this is just terrible. And that's not, you know what, Corbello's not even faking it there. If you're going to rough up the kicker, rough him up. Man. <laughs> Don't have 
to be expensive. Our 70,000 mile premium Futura Touring tires aren't expensive. They start at just $35.99 each. $35.99 each is a great deal. Futuras are some of the best tires made. They just cost less. Yeah, boys, we're car people. I hope you slept well, because now you die. Prepare to meet Iron Skillet. Oh yeah, Tekken 4 is here. Punish your enemies with new moves, interactive environments, and new fighters. It's a legend so deep, no one just plays it. They live it. Tekken 4, ready T for team. If you miss the show that everyone's talking about, here's your chance to see back-to-back -back episodes of Beg, Borrow, and Deal. Sunday starting at 9, a special encore presentation on ESPN. All right, Todd, if you're South Carolina and you fall down 24-14 to the number one defense in the nation, you're asking a lot of your offense. And that was heads up on the part of Lou Holtz. His games, you should understand that and call that timeout. A very well-timed timeout. First and 10 from the 13-yard line. Here's the handoff. It's to Carey. Carey trying to get into the end zone. He does! Touchdown! LSU! 13 yards. Sharon Carey. Well, of course, if the offensive line for LSU is going to get Carey a touchdown like that so far away, a 14-yard touchdown, no amount of timeouts is going to change things. I really would have thought it would give the Gamecocks a chance to, to regroup, you know, be a little more aggressive and stick carry just ran right over the top of it. It's got to be pretty exciting, doesn't it? Number two, I think that's only the second carry of the game. John Corbello, point after attempt, and it is good. So late in the third quarter. Now 24 to 14. So what do you think? The best team in the SEC these days, LSU or Georgia? You know what? It, it's so hard. It's so hard to say simply because it, you know it's a little bit like the uh, like the NFL. Everybody seems to be even. And look at the blocking. Here's the pull. The carry just needs to follow behind the pulling guard. In, in this case, that was number 60, and that's Rodney Reed coming out front. Great block also by his fullback, number 30, Solomon Lee, who enables number two to get over the top. And of course, the key play of this drive was the just inopportune on the part of Matthew Thomas to lay out and catch Corbello in the leg. And that's a 15-yard penalty. And instead of being down 20 to 14, it said it's 24 to 14. LSU has scored on all three of its second half possessions. And that five plays, 49 yards, 205 of time, and carry for the 13-yard touchdown run got some tailbacks here, don't they? No wonder he wasn't worried about Dominic Davis getting tired. He knew he had some of the guys that could carry the mail. Pretty hard to compete in the SEC without having some running backs. You're right. Well, just as we were talking about, we were just talking about Cadillac earlier. Because I'm just saying he get some touchdowns. John Corbello kicking off. Jenkins needed to throw that flat. He did not. And I tell you what, LSU was out 
for their opponents, 47 to 10 in the third quarter. This third quarter has been huge for the Bayou Tigers. And the point after attack is good. So how did this happen? <laughs> All of a sudden, LSU with a knockout punch, a Carolina hit. Jenkins makes two mistakes in terms of the turnover. He has the long distance interception that ended up turning into a score, and now he floats a pass. And I think that's what Skip Holtz is saying to him now. This is what we're going to do next. But this ball, take a look at the trajectory. Too much of a flow. Hookin is able to cut in front and make the play. And that's a gimme. Boy, oh boy, I bet number 33's eyes lit up. Watch this ball. That's just too high. That's just too much time in the air. Hookin able to get through the phalanx of blockers and come in for the gimme score. Talking about 10 points off of turnovers for Nick Saban's crew. The other thing with Lou Holtz now is he has to consider maybe the substitution of Dondrell Pinkins because Pinkins is the better thrower. From Camilla, Georgia. Might have to give him a different look. It's a sad night in East Liverpool, Ohio. Home of the Lou Holtz Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, listen to the crowd here in Baton Rouge.
good story. And on first down, Dominic Davis. Not much there. Let's go to Matt Weiner. I defer into overtime and the swap and Florida strikes first. Rex Grossman. 26 yards, looking for his favorite target. Taylor Jacobs, touchdown. Gators up by seven. Auburn now gets the ball. You like overtime in college better than the National Football League time? No. No, but nobody asked me. Except you. That I did. Second and ten.
dreaded telemarketer. Nice, strong. Telemarketers got your number? Get the Telus app, and soon those annoying calls will just about stop altogether. Available at stores everywhere. Introducing three grilled favorites on one sizzling skillet. Fajita chicken, shrimp, and barbecued ribs. Chili's new Fajita Trio. Hey, Mo, what's better than one tire at a great price? Four great tires, Manny? Exactly. How about four great tires starting at less than $100? Four tires starting at less than $100. Now that's great. Great is what we do best. Yeah, boys, we're car people. Warning. The following stunts were performed by professionals. Do not attempt anything from this movie. Jackass, the movie. Rated R. In theaters everywhere this Friday. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate.
three of the receivers on streaks since there was a lot of grass in front of Jenkins. He had plenty of room to get the first down and then some, but number 93 is able to drag him down. Yeah, he is a big enough. Defensive tackle. 6'3", 289. That's pretty much, that's average now, isn't it? It's a big lap. <laughs> Good for you and me. Third and five. There's Jenkins coming near side. And the ball is caught by Agee, but no, it's incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down. So, were you surprised to see Jenkins back in? I was. I thought it was curious. Did Jenkins get hurt? You bring in Jenkins, and then uh, you pull him after one series. Well, I mean, he's your thrower. So I was under the impression that was the reason he was in. I don't know, maybe, maybe he got dinged. Jenkins from Camilla, Georgia. Not that far from South Carolina. Tyler Dean getting ready to punt from his 15. And this is a good punt. Dominic Davis calls for the fair catch. And LSU will take over the football. 46-yard punt. All Tigers here in the fourth quarter.
yesterday, and I, I've forgotten how big he is. He is really a big quarterback. Well, you know, the punishment that they have to take now is very rare now that you can afford the luxury of having a quarterback that's, say, 185 or 190 at that level. And, of course, the name of the game at that level is kill the quarterback, so you got to be <laughs> tough back then. you got to have a big body. On first down, bouncing off tacklers is Joseph and Dye. And down at the 41 and 2 by Island after pickup of three. And if you're wondering how LSU did it here in the second half, they really have done it this way. They've gotten the turnovers, that's one. And the second point is they only had one penalty, only one mistake in the third quarter as opposed to eight in the first half. Well, of course, a lot of that is the result of number 31, Dominic Davis. It's interesting because he's out, of, he's out of the game now. Nick Saban was criticized last week for keeping Mock in the game too long, thinking that that injury was a byproduct that he should have been on the sidelines. I wonder now if we've seen the last of 31. Second and five. Here is the pitch. And not much there. Thrown back is Joseph Adai by Preston Thorne. You know, that's always a tough call for a head coach, particularly when you want to get a guy as much work as he possibly can to make sure that your offense, you know, which is dependent on execution, you, you want to keep him in there as long as possible. Well, of course, the difference in the case of Davis is they do have plenty of tailbacks, so you can get some guys in there. But quarterback, you're not so sure. You don't know that you want to have a fresh body out there that might fumble the center snap or do something else. You certainly can't fault Saban for that in the case of Mock. I mean, Mock's only a sophomore, too. And, of course, you know, Nick points out, Nick Saban points out the fact that, you know, he has an NFL mentality. And think about that. You know, at the NFL, as you know, because you do so many radio games with the Falcons, you know, that quarterback's in there. And some quarterbacks have every snap of every game. On third and four, LSU gets it first down, courtesy of Joseph Vidai, tackled by Faison. Six tackles for Rashad. Monday Night Countdown previews ABC's Monday Night Football game and provides up-to-the-minute NFL news with Stuart Scott, Tom Jackson, Ron Jaworski, Sterling Sharp, and Chris Mortensen. Monday Night Countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Then join Al Michaels and John Madden as the 4-1 Colts take on the Steelers in Indianapolis at Pittsburgh. So you go, girl! You <laughs> go, girl! Yes, indeed. Hard to find matching slacks with a shirt like that. Did you have any... You have an infant son. Did you think about naming him Flexico by chance? I did not. As in oh. verse? Yeah. Sharon Carey gets the call, pickle a couple of yards, but Thompson is there. You named Jeffrey after yourself. That's really a <laughs> Come on, Flexico Hollinger. I guarantee you that if he'd have been, you know, when he starts school, well, that means his scholarship already does. He does. Not only that. Already again, scouts start sniffing out your kid. He has no problem with being mistaken, right? Now, Jeff, there are a lot of Jeffs. Flexico Hollinger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe not. All right, Kira, if you're watching this. <laughs> Quick 
feet, he bounces to the outside. And of course, it might have been that he has a new jersey on. You see that? Look how dirty that other number 31 was. He is a sensational football player. He is. He is. 26 carries for 113 yards in that touchdown. Corbello, point after attempt, is good. Late in the fourth quarter. All LSU. They have turned it up and on in the second half and blown away South Carolina. The Saturn View comes standard with four-wheel independent suspension. Split folding rear seats for more cargo space. We're losing light. <laughs> Saturn View at 0% APR, zero down payment, and zero monthly payments for 90 days. See retailer for restrictions. Start your Sunday with the NFL Countdown Team, now joined by Coach Phil Parcells. And they're in trouble. And get weekly insights from John Madden, 11 a.m. on ESPN. The all-star treatment means our customers are 100% satisfied. Our trained professionals have all the information so you make the right choice. Choose from the top brands of new pre-owned and factory certified pre-owned vehicles in America. Great prices and a selection that can't be beat. Experience the all-star treatment at any of our convenient locations or log on to allstarautomotive.com. We go out of our way to put you in the driver's seat. Choose all-star where the deals are sweet. Jeremy Lawrence. Uh, in fact, you've got a stat on Lou Holtz. Go ahead. I do. He's had 
31 paces for 440 <laughs> yards. Okay, so he's, he has done much better than his team, but unfortunately, Holt Lou was not able to get into the end zone. It's been a very frustrating pacing for Lou Holtz here in the second half. It's been, it's been like an avalanche. The offense of uh, LSU has really taken over. Tsunami way. The ESPN2 pedometer on Lou Holtz tonight. Second and 18, Pinkins. Good pass, and it is complete to Mikhail Goodman. And tackled by Damian James. Let's check in with Stacey Bates. Well, this is not exactly where anybody wants to see Matt Mock on the sidelines on crutches. You remember the pressure of what it was like to have your first start. What do you think about Marcus Randall tonight? Uh, you know, I had the most utmost confidence in Marcus. I think he did a great job tonight. You know, he showed everybody that, that he's capable of doing it, and I, I continue. I just see him getting better and better each week. Did you sit down with him before the game and give him any uh, any ideas, any pep talks? You know, I, I just kind of said to him, kind of went over how, how the game would kind of play out, and uh, I just told him to play hard. That's all he can do. That's all he can worry about. We've been following your situation, a torn ligament that could require surgery. Do you think your season's over? Uh, you know, I hope not, but uh, we'll leave that up to the doctors. Demetrius Hookman on his way for six, but penalty markers are down. At the 18, I think this may be coming back. Well, the interception isn't coming back. Uh, they will have the ball, but I think there was a block in the back for a chop block. Or even roughing the passer. Wow. Torrin Williams, it appears, is going to be the guilty party, and Pumpkin's going to have a word with him afterwards. And Pumpkin has had a terrific game. All right, let's hear. You think that was picks ball back? Personal foul. Roughing the passer. On the defense. Shot to the head. about uh, LSU. They're at Auburn next week, then they're at Kentucky, and then home with Alabama and Ole Miss, and then close it out at Arkansas. As you look at the replay. Well, I don't know. That wasn't necessarily... The, the blow to the head came head to head kind of off to the side. This is... You know what? This is a tough crew, boy. You can't... Uh, you know, those three personal fouls have been pretty close, I think. On first and ten, Pinkins out of the pocket. Wide open in LSU territory is the wideout Corey Taylor out of Decatur, Georgia. Pick up of 15. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now. Jeff, Notre Dame and Air Force over on ESPN, and we have a score. Carl Holiday trying to make something happen. Hit, it pops it up right in the hands of Marcello Grady. He'll take it in for the score. Air Force's 16th turnover in their last five games. They're up 7 up. That's the second. That's the second fumble, Matt. But he's had. I wonder about his shoulder. Don't you, Jeff? Yeah. Wonder about whether or not that's 100 percent. That's right. That's a great point. First and ten. What's well, why I'm the analyst stuck on. Huh? <laughs> Up top, Pickens, and it's incomplete. Hey, yes. Sunday night, nine o'clock on ESPN. Catch two episodes of ESPN's hit reality series, Beg, Borrow, and Deal. While Team Kobe is challenging the NHL, Team Contact tries NASCAR. Then at 10, Team Kobe looks to America's pastime. Meanwhile, Team Contact is on Tobacco Road. Beg, Borrow, and Deal presented by Miller Lite, Sunday at 9 Eastern on ESPN. And a reminder that Lou Holtz's post-game press conference can be seen on ESPN News. You can hear what Lou thinks of LSU. I think it's a team that, that deserves to be in the top ten. How about you? Well, it does. I mean, think about this at halftime. We're talking about, ooh, they got 212 yards. Look at that. The defense isn't that great. Since that time, they've had 31 yards in the entire second half. I think it's going long. And it is incomplete. Corey Webster. Pretty good defense out there on Corey Taylor. The white out. Well, based on what happened around the nation, it's conceivable that they sneak into the top ten. Well, I, I, you know, you take a look at this defense and how opportune they are in terms of finding turnovers yep. and the ability to cut down on the mistakes. And, and this quarterback they have tonight, Marcus Randall, has been impressive. And let's not and let's not forget the adjustments that they made at halftime for the running game of South Carolina. Yeah, that's right. Randall, 12 for 23, uh, 185 yards tonight for LSU. On second, 15. Pinkins, it is complete. Underneath. And the catch is made. Game of seven. Sports Center coming up next. Game one from Anaheim, the World Series against the Giants. Update on the Rally Monkey. Ducks. Oakland and 
doubles. Some of the stories straight ahead. Third and nine. Pankins. And it is complete. Catch is made by Corey Taylor. And Taylor thumped out of bounds with three seconds left in the ball game. Lejeune is there, the strong safety. It's a gain of 24 yards. Got to give Pinkins one more shot at the end zone. You know, for not being as good a runner, he showed good feet there. Scrambling to the outside, buying time so he could put the ball right on the money. Up next for South Carolina is Tennessee and then Arkansas, both at Williams-Brice Stadium in Columbia, and then in Florida and Clemson to wind up the season. Quarterback controversy perhaps in Columbia between Jenkins and Pinkins.